Hello people, and welcome back to part 40 of Palavan, our vanilla city's Skylines build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And it is part 40, which means that it is time for a city recap. And you're going to glance back over episodes 31 to 39 today. And see how the city has grown now that public transport networks are active and buildings have leveled up to what we want them to be. And the area has kind of just become what it's become. How about this sunset? <laughs> What have you? What have you indeed? How far Palavin has come. Fantastic, wonderful. Okay, let's start with part 31, shall we? Where we worked on the downtown stadium and entertainment area. So the kind of the point of this build was to obviously use up some uniques. We got uh, the posh mall in here, the stadium of course, and uh, the resort hotel from the Japanese content creator pack. Lovely looking asset. But we really use this build as an excuse to kind of gradually bring our skyline down, right? See where we have this nice little gradual ascending height? This is exactly what we're after. Of course, taking our inspiration from Pittsburgh. And it's a, it's a really nice area. I really enjoyed it. Huge fan of this right here, this tram stop design. Uh, with the part life fencing in the hedges, right up next to the, uh, the music club too. I think we don't get enough of this like red brick aesthetic in cities and when you do kind of have it, it really pops in the area. Super big fan of this. And we also added an intercity bus stop in here as well which is a nice little public transport hub uh, because we merge in with the ring underground metro here and the regular ring metro which is a little further down there towards the, uh, the theme park peninsula uh, which we'll have a look at in a minute as well. But we use lots of uh, car parks around here. Uh, to, <laughs> to some people's um, displeasure, I suppose. But it's the vibe we wanted to go for. There's a ton of them over here as well. But you know, it's an entertainment area. You need a, you need a lot of parking, especially in the stadiums and kind of big commercial buildings like this. And we also used uh, some nice little downtown green belt stuff to fill out some of these awkward spaces that we have between the road network. Uh, the cycle highway, of course, extends down here too. And uh, we used a lovely little repeated conifer pattern, which really stands out at night time because it really silhouettes against all the light of the city. Huge fan of this view right here. Huge fan. I, I really actually remember saying we were going to reintroduce the overground metro here um, and switch it to the elevated station as opposed to on the ground, uh, which we will do. It's absolutely a live stream job, I think, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this part of town also has its own... Uh, Ring Road Junction, which uh, turned out really nicely. It's getting some nice flow now too. We also use the City Arch here as well as a way to kind of introduce people into the city. I think this is a nice little spot to use it. There goes the Metro as well. Fantastic. <laughs> There's just something about the nighttime Palavan, isn't there? There really is. Uh, and then of course the stadium part of the build. Uh, we can't forget this. So as we came up towards the, the edge of our high-rise kind of financial district here, we began to merge into some open parkland vibes using, uh, I think this is, is it the neighbourhood? Yeah, friendly neighbourhood park, uh, unique building. Uh, and also integrated uh, an elevated cycle highway, which we have seen active on a match day. Uh, this gets super, super busy. You can just see, you know, so many tourists flying around here, using the public transport. Let's get an idea, a little taste of how people use this cycle highway, which actually does extend across the river. And then down onto uh, this infrastructure over here and into the aviation club and whatnot. But we'll, we'll kind of get over here in a minute. So yeah, again, lots of repeated car park spice. Oh, it is a match day. Wonderful. <laughs> this is actually perfect and totally unplanned. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a match day. Um, but we can see you now, we still get some people driving to get out of the city because there is um, a highway connection super close by. And we can see that repeating theme that, you know, even in the downtown setting, not everything has to be zoned, right? A little bit of open parkland near some of these taller buildings. I think it really helps highlight them just that little bit more. And lots of people using uh, the Ring Metro station now as well, which we can see. I'll get a little look at the figures here. At uh, 59, obviously this will update once people come through. And the tram line is nice and busy as well. So it's nice to see all this public transport spice just, just coming into play now. 
Especially on like, I love this part of town when it's when there's a match day because it gets super busy. You know, if anyone that's ever been to like a stadium or like an exhibition center when there's been an event on, it's a nightmare to get out of. <laughs> and I think we've really created that, and the skyline really serves as a a wonderful backdrop for it. Big fan of this area, and you guys really enjoyed it as well. Anyway, we shall move on to part thirty-two where we worked on. The Peninsula theme park, which was quite a challenge. Um, we ended up calling this Are You There, which is now five stars. And <laughs> and uh, it was a super tr tricky space to work with, like really tricky. We could have terraformed this out to get it to kind of sit straight, and I think we might do, just kind of flip the angle here so it comes straight out rather than this weird bend. But I don't want to do too much terraforming around here. And um, if, if we'd have gone for zoning here, it really wouldn't have worked out that nicely. It would have been like, super fractured, really awkward space to work with. But I think the way that we integrated the theme part was really nice. It came through some fence spice and some tree spice up alongside. Uh, where we couldn't really get any other assets in, just to help decorate it out. And it's a super little like colourful pop as well, because all the theme park assets are so brightly coloured. Lots of pinks and especially the roller coaster here. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Look amazing. So it's right there. The Ferris wheel at the head and that downtown is as the backdrop too. Especially as the sun's coming up. <laughs> so a big fan, there is absolutely some underwater jankiness going on here. We can see where the water's coming down, but nothing nothing too dangerous, I don't think. And also, uh, the lighthouse people uh, petitioned to keep this thing here. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't actually mind it now. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's been here for a little while, I think it's grown on me. Um, although I know some people aren't a fan. But welcome to the channel, everyone. Can't please everyone, right? And we also use the Boat Museum. Unique building here as well, which kind of fits in. We might move this eventually, but for right now, I think it's going to be okay there. Then we also hooked in a bridge, which now uh, just crosses the river over into a dumbbell interchange. And then kind of comes in different directions. You can head back this way or get on a slip road and rejoin the highway. Get some very nice flow around here. Uh, we also decorate this interchange really wonderfully. Plenty of rock and overgrowth spice and trees too. Uh, and hugging the slip roads with a little bit of fence. So I think it just helps highlight the road a little more, you know, especially when we're around all these larger rocks. There is some truly fabulous spice over here as well, we're using some ore industry fence, a vanilla path, some bushes, and a radio mast and some power lines to kind of make a little just a little maintenance yard it's totally pointless it serves no purpose but i think just as a way to decorate one side of a roundabout coupled with the slightly elevated water tower with some ring bush patterns really nice design i think for this dumbbell and some nice flow too kind of get a little idea of how people are move, moving around here it is a uh, it's a nice little interchange. And this, of course, will now flow into the new part of the map when we come to build uh, within these spaces over here. And we'll probably also um, turn this into some kind of dramatic Y interchange so we can bring uh, a highway that runs parallel with this river down towards the coastline. But overall, you guys really enjoyed the, uh, the downtown theme park. And so did I. Some slight changes still to be made, like reintroducing the overground metro. But it's not far off, I don't think. It's not far off kind of what we're after. Anyway, we will move on to part 33, where we worked on a series of ferry terminal designs. Um, so this was kind of the project of activating Palavan's river network to actually be functional. Uh, so the ferry line starts here, down by the fantastically beautiful Dawson waterfront. We, we can't stop here without looking at some nighttime spice, right? <laughs> there it is. Yes, please. <laughs> Just delicious, isn't it? Really, really is. And then the river network will flow along the river, where we stop at the Green Cities neighbourhood. This has like its own little dedicated sunken area with a little bit of office zoning, touch of commercial, some paradox plazas in here as well, alongside some normal plazas. A huge kind of rock garden green belt around here as well, but the whole point of this episode was to look at how we can decorate ferry terminals into their own little design as opposed to just placing them on like an empty riverbank like over here and then moving on and just allowing it to kind of function like that. They're almost like micro town centers um, and then it also flows over here as well 
as we come through Canalavan, which we will have a look at in a minute. Comes down here. There we go. Let's get a little little view here. Got some people using our elevated zoo path now as well. It's fantastic news. So the point of this path is to link people through from the tram network that flows around uh, Canalavan uh, into this side of Canalavan, which houses Canalavan's ferry stop. Again, very similar vibes over here, you know. Uh, we came through with very similar aesthetics like uh, nature reserve fence, conifers. We also started to introduce these little little one by two green cities, high density housings that work really nicely in like a battery repeated pattern. And there's also um, a tropical garden in here as well. Alongside some smaller assets. Again, you can see how we use our terraforming to sink it down onto almost like another layer, you know. We uh, reclaimed some of the land from the river here. Uh, had some <laughs> pretty incredible tidal issues. And we came over here as well, uh, added in another ferry stop next to our fishing marina, uh, which is looking really nice now. This was such a nice way to bring this neighbourhood to a close. And also border up alongside the highway here as well. But uh, yeah, we went for some more industrial vibes, more repeated fence and tree patterns with bushes. Uh, there's a bus line that stops through here again, so you know, it's converging two different methods of public transport. Very light office zoning. Uh, use the industrial roads to try and recreate that industrial effect. And then, yeah, just kind of tied out this area because this was all empty. There was nothing behind uh, the fish market. It was just overgrowth and rocks. <laughs> like 98% of Palvin. Um But yeah, really happy with this. Some fence spiced up against the river just to act as almost like a safety barrier. And of course, some of those repeated uh, Green City 2x2 two two car parks in here as well, just because it is like an office park. You would expect some kind of office zoning in there, right? As we carry on down the river through the absolute swarm of salmon boats and ferries, <laughs> this is not a safe place to be. Uh, we arrive at the downtown ferry stop, which links into the uh, Arts and Heritage District, which we'll cover uh, in a moment as well. Uh, but yeah, this one hooks right straight into the ring road, and it also has a pathway uh, that comes up and over the ring road and metro. And this centralises perfectly with the academic library here. We get a lot of people using this, especially when the ferries are coming down. And now you can see it's converging two methods of public transport again. Uh, these are linking into our trams, which head back into the transport hub over here. Uh, it's just so nice, you know, to to see these paths get in action. Huge fan, especially when they're... Oh. <laughs> I think this has quickly become one of, I think, most people's favourite view in the city. We've got so much spice happening here. There's two metro lines. There's one over here, we can see there. The Ring Metro, of course, a monorail line, trams, and just that backdrop of kind of Palavan's high rise. Is that going to be our thumbnail? <laughs> Very possibly could be. Very possibly could be. And then we'll continue down the river here, right, where we have some uh, walking paths by, which links people through uh, from kind of small town uh, into downtown. And then as we carry on down the river, uh, we arrive at the end of this ferry line, uh, which again is hooked into uh, some buses that take people into the small town. And we came through with some nice sports park vibes here. There's also another bridge that links people through into the theme park here. They're just so busy. They really are just like incredibly busy. It's nice to see. Huge fan of them. Not sure how I feel about these ones so low down to the water. I think I prefer them a little taller, like these ones over here. But either way, uh, we use the kind of the double ferry terminal here. And what we will do now, because we've unlocked 25 tiles, we'll use this second port here that it doesn't currently have a stop. You know, we can expand this ferry network uh, out now. Oh, there's a ferry over here. Hello. We'll eventually have a port for you to dock, but for right now you will have to sail on. But you know, we can uh, expand. Canalavan's ferry network now down to the coast which will be a fun little project I think and uh, the amusement park has its own ferry stop and then there's also uh, a ferry stop as they <laughs> as they merge into each other um, 
There's a ferry stop over here by the Aviation Club, which again is linked in with some uh, walking infrastructure, which keeps our crossroads here free, so people can't just walk across kind of a high-speed road. It helps our traffic flow a little more. Uh, and this flows into another uh, intercity bus station, which gets some nice use. You know, it kind of catches people here and links them into the ferry network. And we can see just how many of them are choosing to travel over here, come and visit the Aviation Club, of course. Uh, which does have some nice car park spice around it, some nice plazas. Lots of farm fence and larger rock assets here to border this space between our build and the highway. And then a little bit of office zoning, and then we always use a little repeated gazebo pattern, almost as like viewing platforms for people coming to watch their friends fly planes or whatever you do at an aviation club, I don't know. And then more repeated fence spice here. We do still have some more work to do over here. You can kind of see where <laughs> where we moved on from this project. Uh, we kind of placed in a climate research station here. I think this is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so we just need to come back through here and polish off this little bit of the build. But uh, it's a nice little little part of town, I think. But, yeah, the water tower from Sunset Harbor works really nicely, almost like some air control tower kind of vibes. Really happy with that. And as we kind of come down towards this bridge over here, which takes you back into the downtown stadium and entertainments area, uh, we came through and worked on some slight hood vibes, I think is the phrase I'm looking for here. You know, kind of like the part of town no one goes to. Or you do if you're looking to buy like certain goods. This is where you would go. Got a skate park in here as well. Kind of on the fringes of the downtown. Just locks out over it. So it's kind of like lower income, kind of rougher areas was the vibe that we wanted to go for here. I don't think it turned out too badly. Um, it's kind of a really awkward space. You can't really do anything with this between the change in elevation and the rest of the infrastructure. But I'm pretty happy with it. Lots of fencing around each of the housing assets and some nice walking paths to, to break up the pattern. Did something very similar here as well using some even smaller ones. Uh, yeah, slight, almost trailer park-esque vibes is the, the thing we were going for here. A uh, nice way to use up a slightly awkward space, I think. Uh, and then Palavan's Ferry Terminal, kind of <laughs> coming back to part 33 here. Um, Palavan's Ferry Terminal does end here for the minute. However, it will continue down here where once there is reason for people to actually be in this part of the map. And on this final ferry terminal, uh, we used the supermarket and the winter market which actually they were a really nice combination of assets these two they work very well outside each other i don't think it's not quite perfectly centralized is it i think you probably could get it there but uh a nice way to kind of drop people off into the downtown path linking them through past more of this repeated conifer and fence spice that we have everywhere and then it just links them back through uh, into the ring road junction uh, so they can either carry on to one of the Ring Road metro stations or catch a tram in the stadium area. You know, there's a, a multitude of options for them to switch public transport methods as they move around Parliament. But, um, yeah, that's Parliament's ferry network. And in part 34, we worked on the unfortunately named Nipple Hill Transport Centre, <laughs> which I was bribed via Super Chats during a live stream to name. And um, thank you to Casino for that moment. Um, named after this for <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, let's not get the channel demonetized just yet. But yeah, this is a uh, Palavan's main transport hub. Uh, it sits between uh, the kind of the downtown high rise and the highway that flows through this part of town. And uh, what do we go for? Let's kind of have a little discussion about what happened here. So we stole the School of Engineering. Yes, I got it right. <laughs> we stole the School of Engineering uh, from the University of Technology over here uh, because I wanted to use this asset in a downtown setting for quite a while. So we almost treated this area as like a micro campus of the Palavan Institute of Technology or Prepared to Exams University as it is kind of known within the channel. Uh, added in some cafeteria assets here too alongside... A laboratory? Yes. <laughs> Guessing all these assets today. Uh, yeah, the Trade School Laboratory is down here, of course, and also the tram line, which feeds down kind of Main Street downtown here. Uh, brings people in and out of the city, connecting to all those public transport systems that we've seen before. 
And it kind of comes in, stops outside a little little zoo uh, souvenir shop and cafe. I think this is the restroom, is it? No, it's the cafe. So uh, subscribers Casino and Nicole uh, took over this live stream with Karen Park and the Nipple Hill Transport Centre, unfortunately. Um, but look how much we're cheesing the Sims here. Uh, so the external rail lines feed into this station, and this is what kind of where they flow. This is one right now. This is a external train that's come from outside of Palavan. It uh, drops them off where they can catch this train, which takes them over to the mining town, which was the most recent episode. However, most of them do prefer to actually come out of the station. Uh, right here, we'll wait for some to emerge. Hopefully soon. But yeah, very small micro part life cheers here. Let's see if we can catch a look at how much it's earning. It's pretty silly. It's a lot of, like, loads of money. <laughs> uh, people paying to come through this thing. And, uh... Yeah, super busy transport hub. It's a nice design. I'm really happy with it. Trams are mega busy too. Uh, there's also a metro station uh, here as well, which feeds over into the, the small town vibe again, kind of crossing over the river here. And uh, the monorail, of course, uh, which just flows over our kind of main downtown street here and into the arts and entertainment district, which we'll cover momentarily. Now we had some lovely uh, repeated pattern spice on this kind of main bridge. So this is a big six lane that comes across the river. And then we boxed in some palavan pines down on the floor here. Uh, with some nice little repeated uh, pathways either side which get a little bit of use here and there. And uh, yeah, just a nice kind of really important looking key arterial road that flows through this area. And then over a little bridge as well. Yeah, really happy with this aesthetic. Not a huge lover of the way this monorail rises up, but I think we'll cope with it until this will eventually flow into the airports, just kind of basically in a straight line, straight the way through here to uh, link into those eventual airport builds, which will sit on that landmass. But in terms of the transport centre, it's not the biggest one we've ever built on the channel. But um, it's really busy and it fits into a really nice space with lots of path and repeated uh, tree spice all around. Uh, you guys really enjoyed it. Thank you for all the support on this episode. Uh, transport hubs are always a popular one. And uh, I got away with this one, I think. <laughs> I think I got away with it. And in part 35, we headed just across the road and began work on the Arts and Entertainment District. Or Arts and Heritage. I can't remember what I called it. I think it was Arts and Museum District, I think we called this. Uh, so again, a very awkward space that we had between uh, kind of the key highway and the river. Uh, so we came through with a lot of unique buildings here. There's also a metro station and uh, a ton of parkland around this around this place here. Oh, a little sunset. Yes, boys. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think I've, I've recorded this episode mostly at night time, haven't I? I hope everyone's enjoying the nighttime spice. However, Academic Library, Theatre of Wonders, the theatre and the Museum of Modern Art. Modern Art Museum, close enough. <laughs> Nearly got all four of them. Uh, and some modern city centre uh, blocks of commercial here as well. Uh, came in with the Technology Museum that we unlocked uh, from hitting a level 5 Institute of Technology. And of course uh, a ring metro stop that is uh, greeted by a tram square with another kind of nipple hill design in the middle as well. Probably not super happy with the location of this high school here. It doesn't really make sense. I think I just use it to fill out the space, but there is some pathways that kind of come under the highway here and feed into uh, the downtown Green Cities district, which we'll get to. Uh, but I was a really huge fan of these blocks of commercial up alongside the highway here. Likewise with the uh, Museum of Modern Art too. Oh, we also have, yeah, there's a, an elevated highway here as well, isn't there? An uh, elevated cycleway even. Uh, so we had an idea in this live stream of using the space between the highways to introduce some elevated cycle infrastructure. Which, as you can see, I have been exposed for not <laughs> for not fixing these yet, but I will, I promise, before, before the series ends. Uh, and then these feed back into uh, the Green Cities neighbourhood uh, over on this side of the map via that little park entrance gate over here. And uh, it does get a lot of use. This is a super busy cycle highway. And uh, it's got a really nice journey too. Kind of 
Especially with this view to the, the skyline over here now. Comes right down here. There's also a stop down in this part of Canalavan too. But I just need to come through and straighten them out a little bit. And then there's some repeated Palavan Pine Spice here as well. But again, it's probably a little over the top, a little too much. This needs probably trimming down a little bit, if you'd excuse the pun. And uh, the monorail uh, that flows from the transport hub also comes over the highway and into the uh, downtown uh, Green Cities district over here. Uh, which was actually the next thing we worked on in part 36, uh, was the, the downtown Green Cities district, uh, which again kind of sits on the right hand side of the highway, so our uh, museum and heritage district is on the left, and all our Green City spice is over here on the right. Uh, there's a metro station here. There's actually kind of a mini transport hub here. Uh, so the monorail that comes over the highway actually comes down here as well. Uh, greeted by yet another tram square. And then a metro station. We just kind of get a little look here as people arrive via these metros and the monorail at the same time as well. Uh, this place gets super busy. Um, really nice kind of active busy micro town centre slash transport hub build to accompany the residential. Uh, really like this area. Of course, lots of uh, repeated kind of run-down fence and tree spice like we like to use with our Green City stuff. And then also uh, a nice big repeated uh, battery of the 1x2 uh, Green City's housings, uh, which look really nice when they're repeated like this. Came through over here too with a, a little ring road slip that does get the occasional use, but uh, the, uh, the back end of this ring road a little further down here isn't hooked in yet, so once that does get hooked in, this will become a little more active. And it will probably bring uh, a slip down here as well, so people can uh, merge onto the ring road uh, from this side. There are people using it here now as well, which is nice. Again, lots of transport infrastructure and spice here. Um, this is the the metro line that comes out of the industrial town centre all the way over there. Uh, and it's now completed. It comes out of Canalaban and kind of crosses over the ring metro. And we get some really nice layered transport spice here with road and two metro lines. Uh, and then kind of the meat and potatoes of uh, the downtown Green Cities district is of course all the high-rise residentials which are looking really nice now, now some of them are levelled up. Uh, we use Plot the Growables and a mix of zoning for these, um, which has given us a really nice variation in height, very densely packed in, which is the vibe that we were after. Uh, some nice little rock garden designs in between all these houses as well, alongside a cycle network in this part of the city also. Uh, the main street looks really nice as well. If we're kind of coming down here, we've got a little bit of a, a school park design on our left using a tropical garden and two of the Green City's school assets, the, uh, the community school and the Institute of Creative Arts. And then we also have uh, the Pyramid of Safety behind here as well, which is a little bit standout-ish at the minute. I think once we kind of come to expand into these areas uh, and fill out these regions of Palavan's downtown, uh, this will help blend in a little more, but it's all right for the minute. It's not my most favourite thing in the world, but it's okay. Uh, and then in the live stream, uh, we came through and worked on a wonderful uh, little downtown cemetery park just to help deal with the death demand around here. Uh, using some of the cryo preservatories, I think, from the Japan content creator park. I have no idea what park these are from. I'll throw it up on screen. Uh, an actual cemetery and some park life assets that almost act as a reception uh, with a little bit of fence and a flower bed spice in here as well. Small car parks and a little bit of a gazebo. And just a really nice way of using up a city block that also is actually useful. It's not just <laughs> kind of endless, pointless decorating, um, like most of the city. You know, it's going to help keep the city free of death. And I found it a nice way to merge out of the Green Cities District as well. Quite happy with that one, I think. Especially as it comes over the highway and kind of over the main street here. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's the, the spice sample that we're all here for, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. It's a nice one. Yeah, super big fan of this area, and uh, it's a nice kind of way to border off uh, this corner of the ring road. Uh, but we will move on to uh, part 37, where we worked on finishing Canalvan. Uh, so back in like part 12 or something, we came through and built this part of Canalvan. And then once we unlock the next tile over, we were able to come through and kind of really bring this area to a, to a nice close. So carrying on from the Green Cities neighbourhood here, this is where we have the, 
at the Green City's town centre. Uh, there's a, a really nice cycle path here that gets a lot of use. Uh, the metro line flows over. This is the one that goes over to the Green City's district in the downtown that we just took a look at. And yeah, super big fan of this area. Um, nice big chunky block of Green City's high density residential, which partnered with the canals and all this greenery. I think this is probably like my favourite combination of assets in the game. Green City stuff and water just just looks so much better, doesn't it, than a like normal high density residential. And the big focal point of Canalavan's extension was, of course, uh, the Ziggurat Garden. Uh, we can't not be here and it not be night time. That's um. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ziggurat Garden worked wonderfully well, and uh, we worked on a little. Uh, repeated uh, rock garden design to sit around it during a live stream. I came through adding like a little educational area again a combination of the two green city schools with a tennis court and a basketball court and some nice fencing uh, nice pathways in between. I used the tram stop uh, or the tram depot for decoration up alongside the waterway here too which I think is nice you know we orientated the front of the asset to face out to the water here I think it really makes a difference Especially with these trees out front too. Okay, you know, we, can, we can see that elevated transport spice up against these skyscrapers. Super big fan. Got a nice tram park in the middle as well. Oh yes, see what I mean? <laughs> this is why I love this area. So, so nice. Huge fan. I kind of feel like a little bit of a douche boy in my own home like this, but I think you've got to appreciate your own work, right? It came through with a little bit of Imperator Spice uh, after he started using uh, the pathways and the zoo fences up alongside his tram stops, which just helps flush them out a little bit. I really like this idea. Um, this was one from Imperator. And yeah, just kind of expanded uh, a basic city park around these tram stops just to kind of have a focal point in front of the Ziggurat Garden. Uh, and then we used some uh, ruins that come with the Murky Coast map, uh, kind of expanded a little nature reserve around here came through and did some micro detail with some smaller campsites uh, in a detailing live stream <laughs> which quickly turned into a full build uh, we did the same over here as well let's get a little bit of night time so we can or a little bit of daytime so we can see what's happening uh, yeah just like little little paths that come off the main one and decorated them with fencing and bushes and some smaller Nature reserve assets and campsites and fishing piers and trees and cabins and it's all very lush and natural and rural and and happy, isn't it? <laughs> I really like these kind of nature reserve builds with the uh, little separate campsites off the main path. There's a lot of different styles and combinations you can use these in. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to get rid of the runes. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with them to sit here and it was a nice way to use up this bit of land here too. And we can probably even justify... A couple more uh, campsites down here as well, I think, at some point. Not quite yet, though. <laughs> uh, again, some of these more 1x2 um, green cities housings are in here, just to flesh out again. A little bit of awkward space where we brought our road down. And then we use kind of the main avenue with the, the, the wall converge in the middle, and we can see how many people are using this to walk back and to. Um, it is getting so much use because it is hooked into public transport. There are trolley buses and a metro station here. So plenty of excuses and reasons for people to walk up and down this road, um, especially to get over to the Ziggurat Garden. Uh, and it really, really brings like another layer of life into the city when you get this many people walking on the roads, I think. Uh, and it is still to be finished over here, um, which now we do have 25 tiles, we can come through and do this. And there's also a, a canal side a cycleway that features in Canalavan 2. Uh, this is the one that we looked at at the start where it kind of elevates up uh, but it is also duplicated on this side and again you know it feeds into uh, public transport people can merge uh, in and out of the back of the air. Uh, like, this part of town is so busy I never really planned for it to get this busy <laughs> um, I think it's just kind of a happy accident of public transport and unique buildings so within like such close proximity to each other because there's like riding stables over here as well you, know, you can just kind of see from this little screenshot here how busy this part of town is now. Kind of where the uh, the Green City's neighbourhood merges into Canalavan. Super big fan. Super big fan. Yeah, and this was kind of the end of Canalavan. Now this is where we finished it off. We do need to kind of come back and just tidy up some of these areas here. You know, kind of it's very obvious where we finished it. 
uh, but we can't do that now that we have uh, 25 tiles of course. Uh, however, in part 38, we headed over into the mountains and started work on uh, the ore quarry and mining town, which are the most two recent episodes uh, of Palavin. Uh, so these are kind of, I guess we'll cover these both at the same time, they're like right next to each other. Uh, so first of all, uh, we worked on the uh, ore mining pit, um, which was happily called, which I still haven't renamed. Uh, we had some extremely good suggestions. Gold retrievers. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't not do that, can I? <laughs> not after I'm literally kind of starting the Golden Retriever Fund live on the live streams. Uh, but yeah, so this is the Gold Retriever um, or mining pit came through, um, obviously where we had some ore. Uh, and we've done kind of a similar build like this before. Uh, we used some underground ore mining pits here. Maintenance building separated slightly away from the road. Uh, we of course dug out this area for ourselves using the terraforming tools. And uh, it is kind of in the shape of a of a small dog, um, <laughs> which again was unintentional. I think the one in the modular build was fairly phallic, so I think everyone was appreciative of the shape this time around. Used lots of the base game uh, vanilla industry stuff, coupled in with the industry DLC stuff, which uh, is a really nice combination of assets. Lots of fencing, rocks, and trees around here. Uh, same with the uh, kind of the medium ore mine here as well, which is a little more animated and almost looks like it's digging the ore deposit out of these rocks here, right? Like this is the actual ore vein itself. Was my idea. <laughs> Might not have come across super strongly. Uh, again, lots more rock assets here. Because, uh, you know, it, we, we could have put a town here, which we did. <laughs> but, you know, it was a nice way to use up some of that ore stuff and, you know, sink it down and make a nice quarry in a kind of a mountain setting which is uh yeah a really nice way to use up the space i think and then off the back of this idea uh, we also decided that we wanted uh, a smaller mining town almost as like an extension of the community so you know we, this was settled many years ago and the workers and the miners needed a place to live uh, so they set up a town um, and this was last episode uh, so we created um a external rail line switch point here uh, so this station right here accepts external trains and then they can switch over via a, a little bridge here, which is nice. One of the uh, the university path ones, which has this like lovely, almost like copper and teal tint to it. Really nice. I really like this elevated bridge. We don't use it near enough uh, as much as we should. So yeah, a super busy area this. We can see, you know, loads of people coming and going uh, via trains. So we'll kind of follow their journey here. They're going to come out. They also did lots of nice, kind of manual, like handmade, almost hand-finished plazas uh, within within these areas, gazebos, nature reserve fencing. Uh, but yeah, crazy this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, none of them are driving from here. Uh, a few of them will drive as they land over here, but the majority of them are actually catching the train. Uh, which flows uh, temporarily underground at the moment and then comes out over here until we kind of come to work on this side of the map then we'll straighten all this out and then just get a sense of how busy this place is right now really nice see pretty much all of them preferring to come through our little man-made plaza and grab uh, the train into the downtown which of course then distributes them across the rest of uh, Palavan via metros, monorails and trams but yeah it's nice isn't it it's nice and busy lots of people here Lots and lots of people. And we came through with uh, some smaller town vibes in this area. We didn't want to go kind of too heavily, kind of dense and lots of really mad infrastructure. Uh, so we came up with this little uh, commercial pattern design, which is also functions as a nice bit of highway decoration. Uh, having kind of this commercial zoning facing the highway. I think it's really nice. I'm a big fan of it. Also decorate the highway with a repeated conifer pattern and some zoo fences. Uh, use a European high school in here and again there is there's loads of paths and fences in this town if you guys want to see kind of how to use them to decorate and add a little more personality into your builds uh, this is a great episode to see how it's done uh, this is part 39 the uh, the old mining town if you will uh, lots of ore fence up against as well to kind of border this green belt between the residentials and the and the, and the train tracks and we'll kind of wait for a, a train to come by here and we can Kind of see the aesthetic that it gives us. 
There you go. You know. So these are very kind of smaller, low income housing, not nearly as tightly packed in as some of the other neighborhoods. And then we used a nice little uh, forestry fence and vanilla gravel path pattern uh, in between the spaces that are left out from using kind of this sparsely populated area. It does leave you with a lot of open space and I think uh, path and fence designs are a nice way to fill them out. They almost function as like back alleys kind of I guess. At downtown Main Street, or down Main Street rather, not downtown Main Street, uh, we used uh, so again some smaller some smaller housing assets with a little bit of road against road spice to just add another layer of leveling in. We also included some of the actual ore industry assets themselves. What is happening with the lighting? <laughs> I think the sun is trying to set but looks as though it keeps changing its mind. Uh, yeah, we used some actual ore industry assets here just to you know give the impression of like the ore industry it has a presence in the town. Just a little bit of industrial detailing I guess. And then this little town just flows around in the same pattern, you know, lots of fencing, lots of pathways in between them. And uh, it's a kind of a nice way to use, again, what is very awkward landscape here within these kind of mountain craters. Uh, but I think I'm fairly happy with it. It's a nice way of using up uh, that space and you guys really enjoyed it as well. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, a like below is always appreciated. You can much if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave a dislike as well. I want to thank you all so much for all the support on Palawan. It is nice to hit episode 40 and I'm glad to see all the kind comments, suggestions and support that you guys are still enjoying the series as much as you are. And a huge thank you this week for 26,000 subscribers. Uh, it was only a couple of weeks ago that we hit 25k. Uh, so to welcome a thousand new, more people into the channel in that time frame is pretty crazy. So welcome to all the new people. I hope you are enjoying yourself. If you are not in the Discord, it is linked down below. As long as you're not a tool, come and enjoy our community. We are happy, welcoming, and it's a nice way to kind of deal with the very strange world that we're all living in at the moment. Otherwise, hang around for the rest of the outro tag and enjoy a lush, city-wide cinematic tour of Palavan as we recap over the last ten episodes. Otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day